week we've been talking a lot about health versus fitness, how they're different, how they're similar. We need both of them. But in the blog post from earlier this week, I mentioned a concept called deep health. Now, what is deep health? Well, first, it's not my idea. It's uh, something I saw in a course, something that resonated with me, and something that I try to practice in my own daily life and with those uh, who I help and coach. And so maybe this is something that you'd be interested in learning a little bit more about. I think so, whether you work with individuals or whether you're looking to just improve your quality of life. And so today we're going to talk about the six domains of deep health. You can think about these domains as gears, right? All interconnected. If one spins, it moves the rest of them. But if one of the gears is jammed up, all of them are going to come to a, a, a halt, right? And so we are the machine. Those are the gears. And we want to make sure all of them are moving. One or two of the gears might get a little bit more oil, might get a little bit more tension than the other gears. But we need to give all six some attention to make sure overall our health is in a better place than not, right? Are we going to be able to optimize this? Maybe. The reality is probably one or two of these gears aren't going to get as much attention as other ones. And that's just how the the seasons of life come and go, right? But we're going to talk about the six domains. We're going to talk about how you can check in on yourself, asking the right questions. And then we're going to talk about some actionable items that you can take to help improve those domains of health. You'll find some domains are more easily controlled than others, but in all six levels, there's something that you can do to take action and try and improve that aspect of health. We're going to kick things off with our most controllable domain of health. That's our physical health. And this is the most controllable and probably what most people think about when they think about health. What are we talking about with physical health? Well, we're talking about your status with illness and disease. You know, are all your biomarkers in place? You know, cholesterol, blood pressure, those types of things. This is your nutrition as well. Are you eating nutrient-rich foods or uh, are you eating more whole foods than not? Is your caloric balance where you want it to be for your goals? Your exercise falls into the physical health, right? Are you getting regular exercise? Are you lifting heavy weights at least a few times a week? Are you getting at least uh, 30 minutes of moderate to vigorous activity? You know, that kind of stuff. Your physical activity. Are you sitting around all day or do you kind of get up and move around when you can? Those are all parts of your physical health. And to check in on your physical health, you just ask, how do I feel? Do I feel energized? Do I feel sluggish? Uh, And depending on the answer there, you'll know how to move forward. If you're feeling energized, if you're feeling good, stay on course because you're doing something right. If you feel a little bit sluggish, if you feel sore, if you feel, um, you know, tired, well, you can make changes. This domain is simple arithmetic. Add something, subtract something, and you're going to find change. Right? If you're feeling tired, see if you can add some more sleep in, or if you can do something to improve the quality of your sleep. If you're feeling sluggish, well, maybe you're not eating enough. Maybe you're uh, overworking, uh, either in the gym or at work. So those are the things that we can deal with with physical health. Really superficial. Not to say they're not important, they are important, but they're really superficial in that we can see them, we can feel them, and we can take control of them rather easy. So that's our most internal, most controllable uh, domain of health. As we spread out, further out in these domains, we're going to go from internal to external, and we're going to start relinquishing a little bit control. We're going to surrender a little bit, and that's not such a bad thing. As we zoom out to the next domain... We're going to talk about your emotional health. Now, to check in with your emotional health, you simply ask yourself, how do I feel? How am I feeling today? Not physically feeling, but how am I feeling? Am I happy? Am I sad? Am I frustrated? Am I apathetic? You know, the thing you're going to have to work on with this domain is building your emotional vocabulary. And we maybe remember when we were kids and our parents would say, hey, how was school today? And say, fine. Right? A ton of things happened at school. You could have talked about all the emotions you went through. It's fine. So we need to first build our emotional vocabulary. 
And there's resources online. There's uh, something I like. It's called the Wheel of Emotions. And what it does is it starts with these very core emotions, anger, happiness, sadness. But then it branches out and gives you more words to describe the nuances of those feelings. Because the reality is we know that not all happiness is the same. Not all sadness is the same. Not all anger is the same. And so understanding the different dimensions of those core emotions will help you further refine your emotional health. So, hey, how do I feel? I feel happy. I feel sad. Whatever. If you want to give yourself a true check-in on your emotional health, track your emotions throughout the day, right? And this could be truly writing them down, or if you can, keep a mental note of them. But at the end of your day, or at the end of a few days, see which three emotions popped up the most, right? Maybe you saw that frustration popped up the most because at work you're constantly frustrated and you come home and maybe there's some frustration, you know, maybe your dog chews on pillows or whatever. Maybe happiness is one of those top three, right? Whatever it is, quantify those top three emotions. And based off what those three emotions are, assess if those emotions are going to help you get to your goal or your desired outcome. And chances are, if you have a negative emotion in those top three, you're probably getting disrupted a little bit. And so we have to look at those emotions, we have to find the sources of those emotions, and we have to say, can I make change there? And oftentimes it might feel like we can't, because negative emotions are usually brought on by external happenings. But we can change those emotions, because we can change how we react to them. And so we can build a little bit of mindfulness in. If there is something, maybe there's a client you work with, who is late getting you necessary paperwork on a routine basis. Well, you should just be mindful. You need to work with that client. You know that they're probably going to be late. So if they are late, you knew that was going to happen. You're aware of it. You're not going to let it frustrate you. Right? So you have more of a neutral approach to it. And that's still improvement, taking a negative, turning it into a neutral. Because if you're neutral about them being late, Then if they ever do get it in on time, or maybe even early, well, that's a positive emotion. And you're ecstatic, you're excited, you're at least happy about that. So we assess our top three emotions. If there are negatives in there, we try to say, how can I take this negative to a neutral? And it usually lies within just being mindful of what's going on. And then if we can bump those neutrals to positives, well, then we're going to be in great shape, right? We're feeling good most of our day. We're positive most of our day. That doesn't mean negatives won't happen. There are unexpected things all the time. But if we're more positive than negative, we're going to be in a greater state of emotional health. From emotional health, we go out to the domain of mental health. And this isn't mental health like what we're celebrating this month, Mental Health Awareness Month. This isn't the clinical mental health. When we talk about mental health, we're more talking about mental acuity or the energy you have to solve problems. So you can check in on this. You can think back, okay, the last kind of logistical problem I had, maybe that was making a grocery list. Maybe that was an issue that came up at work. Maybe it was coordinating your kids' activity schedules. All sorts of logistical problems pop up every day. But think back to kind of the last major one and think about how you handled it. Did you have the energy to pursue it and and get through it rather unscathed? Or did you have trouble starting it? Did you get stuck in the middle of it and, and kind of froze? The way that we look at mental acuity, the way that we look at our mental energy, and the way that we can refine it simply comes down to organization. So if you felt like there was some logistical issue that, that you couldn't just navigate that smoothly, look back to how you prepared for it. Did you have a to-do list? Did you have yeah, some kind of punch list, some kind of timeline, some kind of uh, plan over the week, over the month, over the year, however long it took? Chances are, if you felt stuck during the solution, you probably didn't have that work in the front end. And so it's a pretty, pretty simple fix. Maybe not easy, but it's just a habit that you have to build in. And the easiest way I've found to do this You can do it on your phone if if you have a little notes app or reminder app. Just pick out three things, right? Say you struggle with meal prep every week, right? Well, the three things you want to get done. First, identify the recipes. 
Well, if I do my meal prep on Sundays, what if on Tuesday I identify the recipes? Because then on Wednesday, I can identify my shopping list. What do I need? All right, I can inventory what I have in my cupboards when I get home from work, and I can make a list. And then Thursday or Friday, I can go grocery shopping. Check off that third step. So now I'm set up for success with my meal prep because I've thought about the recipes, I've gotten everything I needed, and by the time the weekend gets here, I am ready to go. Simple solutions, you just have to be diligent about them. Creating some kind of plan, to-do list, using a planner, that can take work, especially if you're not used to it. So start small. Don't feel like you have to plan out every hour of every day for the entire week, right? If there's just recurring logistical issues that you're spending more time on than you would like, break them down. What steps are needed? And once you build those habits in, well, then that's going to be a routine. All right, this is how I'm going to handle meal prep. Well, you know what else really frustrates me? Balancing my budget. I don't know where to start. All right, break it down into three steps. What do I need? Well, I need to know how much I'm spending. I need to know how much I'm making. And I need to know what I want to save. Keeping it simple will help you navigate those organizational and logistical issues. And those are our three internal domains. We have full control over those. Mental, emotional, uh, and physical. Now, as we branch out to these outer domains, as I said, we're going to lose a little bit of control, but there's still actionable items you can do to keep that health in good standing. Our first external domain is our relational health. Remember, I mentioned these are all gears that spin with each other. So our relational health is going to heavily influence our emotional health, may influence our mental health as well. And depending on where we get that relational health, maybe our physical health as well. But with relational health, we're just asking ourselves, do I belong? Whether that's, do I belong in a social group setting? Do I feel belonging or connectedness to an individual or individuals? But finding where you belong, finding your community, your shared space, some people like to call it your tribe, finding those individuals or that group or that single person or maybe even a pet is how we can look at our relational health. Now, we are social beings. We are meant to be in social situations. But if you're like me, maybe you have a hard time breaking in. We just moved. We're in a new neighborhood. And there's nothing more nerve-wracking to me than going up to a complete stranger and introducing myself. But that's what it takes. So if you can say, do I belong? Or you can ask yourself that. And if you don't feel you do, well, you got to put yourself out there. right? If I wanted to belong in this neighborhood... I had to let the neighbors know who I was, what I did, what my family looks like, things like that. I had to let them know that, hey, I have a garage gym, and I like to bang some weights, and I like to play music a little loud. Is that going to be a problem? Right? Building that connectedness, taking time to extend yourself to somebody else or to a group. Maybe you find yourself a gym or a walking group or a, you know, a local, I don't know, Dungeon and Dragons group, whatever you're into. Finding those groups, finding those people, and making connection is going to support you, support your mental health, support your emotional health, and ultimately support you getting to your desired outcome. But you got to take the first step to establish that connection. And that can be hard. And once that connection is made, there needs to be maintenance. right? Feeling supported and asking for support is a healthy thing to do from individuals that care about you. But if you don't reciprocate, if you don't show them support, if you don't show them appreciation, well, those relational bonds are going to weaken. And you don't have to love bomb people. You don't have to shower them with gifts and, and overextend all of that. But just simply telling them you appreciate them. Right? Maybe you're on the phone with, with a family member and you say, hey, you know, I love you, mom. I love you, dad. Maybe you're talking to a friend. Maybe they helped you work through a problem recently. Come back to them and say, hey, you know, I really appreciated you helping me through that. That made me feel like you supported me, and that makes me feel good. All right? Letting people know that they make you feel good is okay. Sometimes we feel like maybe that's too much, overbearing. But we are social beings. We like to get positive feedback from individuals. So if people are supporting you, support them as well. Strengthen those relational bonds, and then keep your relational health in good standing. Moving from relational health to a deeper domain, we're going to arrive at environmental health. 
Now, there's two levels to environmental health. There's kind of your immediate, your local environment, and then there's this greater environment, community, you know, city, state, things like that. The immediate local environment is where we truly have control. This could be your living space. This could be your uh, selection of where you work out. This could be your workstation. The immediate spaces that we can control means that we can set those up to suffice or set those up to accomplish the three S's of environmental health. To check your environmental health, you need to ask yourself, do I feel safe? Do I feel secure? And do I feel supported? Now, we just talked about with relational health, the idea of support from an individual. So we're not meaning do you have relational bonds in this environment. When we talk about support in your environment, we're talking about your access to resources. You know, if I want a comfortable living space, do I have comfortable furniture? Have I set it up the aesthetic? Do I have the house plants I want? All of those types of things. If I want to take hold of my physical health, my nutrition, do I have the right utensils in the kitchen to cook? Do I have a refrigerator? Do I have things like that? So when we talk about support, we're talking about immediate resources available. Now, if you don't have the resources you need, think about how you can change it. Right? If I am at work and I feel like I don't have what I need, well, then we lean on those relational bonds. Hopefully, you're in good standing with your manager or your boss. And you can go to them and say, hey, you're really doing a great job of supporting me here. But if I had this one thing, I feel like I could do my job a lot better. And because you have that relational bond with them, they're going to say, you know what? I want to see you succeed, so let's try and get you that. Okay? Your immediate local environment is something you have... A lot of control over because you can either make change, like in your living space, or you can ask for help to make the change from people that you have this established relationship with. As we branch out to the larger environment, well, now we're looking at what we call the social determinants of health. And this is things like local economy, right? When we talk about support from the larger community, do we have the resources, meaning do you live in a food desert or do you have access to fresh food? Uh, do you have walking trails? Do you have gyms in the area? Do you have things like that? We can't really control that unless you want to say, go start your own supermarket or build your own walking trail. But that's where we fall back to our mental health. Well, if we don't have those things, if we happen to live in a food desert, what's the closest grocery store for, uh, for you to go to? How long is that going to take? Because now when we think about that meal prep plan, our grocery shopping is going to take a little bit longer because we have to commute back and forth. So as we get to the larger scale, we can't necessarily control the things like the resources you have available or the safety, the level of crime, things like that. But we can control our decisions about those things, right? If you live in an area and there's part of the city that's high crime, try and avoid that if you can, right? If you do live in a food desert, try and find the closest source of food and, and figure out how to get there. Could be a little bit of work, not always fun, but by keeping your environmental health in check, that's going to foster all these other things. If your local environment, if your living space is a safe secure, supportive place, well, it's going to be easier to have people come over, right? And you can build relational bonds there. If it's a secure and supportive place, meaning you have the resources, well, now your mental health is going to be a little bit better because you're going to be able to easily solve problems because you're not worried about lack of security. You're not worried about lack of resources, right? So they're still all intertwined. That environmental health just has two levels, one with more control, one with a little less control, but you can still action uh, something at all levels. And now the last and largest domain of our deep health model is existential health. And this one can be heavy, right? Existential. Why are you existing, right? Or more importantly, why does your goal exist? Whatever you're trying to accomplish, whether it's promotion at work, whether it's some kind of health or fitness related goal or whatever, the question remains, why? And so that's how you can simply check in on your existential health. Can you answer the why? 
And now you might be able to easily answer, say, I want to get a promotion at work because I want to make more money. Okay. Or I want better benefits. Okay. Or I want a company car. Okay. Those are kind of superficial wise. But the reality is your existential health lies much deeper. There is a deeper why that you need to explore. And actually next week we're going to go over the exercise, but it's called the five whys. And it's very simply put, it's asking yourself why five times and answering why five times. If you want to lose 20 pounds, that's a great goal. If you're 20 pounds overweight. Why? Well, I want to look better in a swimsuit. Hey, that's not a bad why. But why do you want to look better? What makes you feel like you don't look good enough right now? Oh, right now we can start getting a little bit deeper. We can start peeling the layers back. And what you will find after the fifth why is a very deep-seated feeling or a deep-seated need. And it's important to identify that because that's going to be what drives you to keep everything else in check. Because you're going to be able to identify at your core why you want to accomplish this. And you're going to be more motivated to set everything else up to help you do that. It's a tough exercise, right? It's going to take a lot of self-exploration. And you know what? You might go deeper than you've gone in quite a while. You might not like what you see down there. But once you can establish that fifth level, it's going to drive everything. All of a sudden, everything's going to open up. It's like you go into the matrix. It's like, oh my gosh, I see the code now. And this is so much easier to navigate, so much easier to keep my emotions in check, and so much easier to keep everything else in check to accomplish this. So our six domains. Now you know about them. Now you know how to give yourself a little bit of a wellness check in each domain. And hopefully you've heard a couple things that you could action to help improve your health. If you liked what we talked about in this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you want more videos like this, I plan on doing this on a weekly basis, talking about some kind of health or fitness related concepts. So go ahead and subscribe if you'd like to get those. And if you have anything to add about the deep health model or maybe something that you realized in watching this, drop it in the comments. If you have other ideas that you would like to see videos about, drop them in the comments, right? Let me hear from you. And uh, otherwise, hope you guys have a great day.